Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I have a little bit of a server thing that I want to do. I have nine of these IBM 3650 model one and um, they are almost all alike. There is some difference in the RAM but most of them, actually all of them except one has a uh, two Xeon 3 gigahertz processors except that one, number eight. It, uh, it has uh, two Xeon processors, 2.5 gigahertz and well I would like them to be um, alike, all of them, easier. So I have gotten another one, it's up here on the shelf just outside of you. Can just turn the camera around and see that right there is one just like it and it has three gigahertz processors in it so I'm gonna take that and take out the processors and move them into data one because it's easier so yeah we're gonna do that I moved the server in here in the living room it's um, noisy and cold out in the server room and if you're new to this channel subscribed uh, lately you don't know this server it's the IBM system x3650 and it's my favorite server this is the model one of the x3650 currently they're on model number five that's the new one and model number six is in the making um, let's just go through this uh, what's on this I very often get asked which server I would recommend for uh, you're a newbie and you just want to do some virtualization this is the server to get that's my opinion uh, what do you get you get a rack mounted server and these comes fairly cheap someone asked me from Brazil the other day and it's not all around the world where these are fairly cheap because he thought he'd got a good offer and that was $625 for a server like this actually a bit smaller it comes with a light path diagnostics panel where you can see if there's something wrong with the server it lights up an uh, LED and if the server is on you can press the remind button and if something was wrong it will light up and tell you what what was really wrong with this server it has a DVD slash CD-ROM rewritable drive it has two USB ports, a VGA connection port there and it has room for hard drives like here uh, these are SAS drives but it also takes SATA drives if you haven't seen that I've done a video where I put 12 terabytes of storage in an old server like this um, this model supports up to 2 terabyte disks I haven't been able to go over that but well that's the front of it let's go to the back or oh, actually let's just turn it around here is the back of the server it has room for two power supplies it can run on one it has an SAS connection for I think this is external storage I've never used it for anything and it has a management port very important you can manage this server, uh, it has its own IP number and everything. You plug in a connection here and you configure it in the BIOS, give it an IP number and you can turn on and off this server. So if this server is located 100 kilometers away from you, you can go on a web page and just reboot the server. So the operating system will be rebooting uh, and as long as you have connection to the management port, you're all good. It has a serial connection, it has a VGA connection, and it has some LEDs for... Uh, it's kind of the same LEDs that are on the front of the server, I guess. Mm. In here, behind these grids, are the management module, and it has a little press button right there, so if you want to reset it, you can press that with a clips or something like that. It has another two USB ports uh, there, another two USB ports here, and two gigabit network connections. It has room for four PCI connections. There is two full length uh, white ones and there are two short ones. So let's go inside the server and see what you get. On the top of the server, there's a nice explanation of what everything is on the front of the server. And it has this lever to open up the server. You press this blue button and pull it back. 
and that's opened up the lid. Here we are. In here are the drives. This is the fans. Down under this windshield is the two processors. Here is the power module for the second processor. The power module for the first processor is on the system board itself. Here is the PCI expansion slots. These are PCI X8. This is the management module. It's an extra thing that you have to buy for this server, but they're really cheap now. This is an eight years old server, so they're really cheap. This will run VMware ESXi 6. That's why I am highly recommending it. This is another windshield and it has room for 12 dims down here and has a maximum capacity of 48 gigabytes of RAM. The largest RAM blocks you can put in here are four gigabyte blocks. The two power supplies are here, power distribution module there. We can take out this whole fan assembly like that. And there is different stuff underneath here. I did a video on how to connect a internal hard drive to this because up here is a SATA connection for an internal hard drive. And down here is a power connector for the same internal hard drive. So combining those two and I put an internal hard drive in this server. But we're really gonna go in and get these two processors out of there. And that's very easy. This server uses the processors, the Xeon 5000, 5100, 5300, 5400 series. Up to four cores and three point something gigahertz, I guess. These are the heat sinks and there is some cooling pasta right there. Like that, like those. And you just take up this lever and that releases the heat sink. Down on the processors, there's a little, little thing that you open like that. And the processor is free. There we are. Small quad cores, 3 gigahertz Xeon processor. This does not have hyperthreading. This is the generation just before hyperthreading and four cores. The 5100 series had some processors with. Did they? I forget. This is the 5400 series and they did not have hyperthreading. The 5500 series, they had hyperthreading. But you get a lot of power in these processors for not very much cash. These processors have been running for years in that server and this com compound, this heat material is really dry. So just moved away from the server. There's no reason to put this down over the server. So. And we're gonna be putting some new one there. There should be an X5450, and uh, yeah, it is. So here are the two processors, pretty clean now. So I'm gonna go shut down the server with the 2.5 gigahertz processors, and we're gonna go install these instead. Here is my VMware, and this is number 218. Uh, but this is the one with the two 2.493 gigahertz processors. They come out as 2.5 gigahertz down here. So we're gonna shut that down and um, go shut that down. Yes. Reason. Oh, let's put in CPU upgrade. CPU upgrade. Okay. And that will be shutting down. As we, as we can now see, number eight is blinking here. This means that the server is it is connected to power, but it's not powered on. The other ones, this one number seven and number nine, they are constantly green, which means they are powered and they are powered on. Uh, let's go around the back and disconnect it. Here we are on the back of it. And as we can see, this green light diode is blinking back here. And that's uh, showing the same thing as on the front. So we're gonna disconnect power, the two power supplies here, there, 
and I'm gonna disconnect the management module right there and the network connection over here oh well, that's that's stuck in there real good that and free up the cable now it should go out without any obstacles We really don't need to take it apart as much as I did in the living room. We just needs to take these off. And I'll dry off the compound on these two. And we take the processors out. There is one. I'm just putting it over here because there's some plastic that it can be sitting on. And here's the other one. So I've removed the, the compound from these two with just some, some regular paper towel. And I've gotten the two 3 gigahertz processors that we're just gonna be plugging in here. And there are some grooves down here that has to be right. These processors, they have two grooves right here. And they fit down here in the socket. Like that. And I just twingle it around a little bit to make sure that it's in there correctly. And we close this lever. And Press down the handle like that. I have some of this thermal, what does it say? Heat sink compound. This is the very cheap Chinese thing. So we're gonna give it some dips. Usually give it three or five small dips like this. Everybody has their own system for that. This is how I do it. Then we take the heat sinks. They have this groove right here. This and that fits over here. There's a hole in the CPU slot right there. Better to see it here. But that fits in there. Oh, it used. Oh, there it is. And that's in there for good. And the other one, same way. Okay, I've put power back on the server and I've plugged in a monitor and my keyboard. So we're gonna power it on. Nice sound. And we should get something on the monitor here. There we are, it found the processes, no problems. Let's see about the RAM. It might have a problem with the RAM. 22 gigabytes? It should be 24. Well, minor problem. It should come with a RAM problem. To get in and, and do some rate configuration, you press Control Alt here. And that is Control A there as it says control a i had a question about that this is the rate controller that is in this server the 8k it has a memory size of 256 megabytes and there's just one disk 300 gigabyte sas drive in the server
and I think we are gonna be booting VMware yep it's booting VMware let's go and see what it comes up with in the server I think it's all good well while that is booting might as well take the other CPUs and put them back in this server we can just see that I've just cleaned them off this is the E5420 and that's a 2.5 gigahertz quad core processor At the computer, the server is now back. We can see that it has eight three gigahertz processors now, or cores, and there is no hyperthreading inactive, uh, and it's not activatable, it cannot be activated. It's not built into the processor. This IBM 3650 Model 1 is a truly remarkable server. It's eight years old, and it's still a killer good server I highly recommend it and when you're really lucky on eBay you can get a really good server like this for about a hundred dollars I've seen them even lower on auctions well yeah they have been more or less given away often it's the transport if you're not in near the countries that sell these cheap I tried to buy one in India and that didn't happen there's just some places in the world where there is no second-hand buying of high-end enterprise equipment and apparently Brazil is also one of those places where you can't buy a good server don't black screen on me rude I highly recommend this server as always if you have been watching my channel you would know that this is my favorite server so Thank you very much for watching my videos. Do subscribe to my channel and join me over at Google Plus where I occasionally post pictures of what I'm up to. So um, yeah, have a nice day. Bye bye.